So now that we have our flight plan filed with the flight service station, we'd go out and pre-flight the aircraft, taxi, do our engine run up, and now we're at the hold short line ready to take off. So what we want to do is open or activate our VFR flight plan. What that does is it allows the flight service station to basically set a timer for us to make sure that we arrive at the other end at the time we said that we would. So if you remember on our flight plan, we said that it would take us one hour and zero minutes to depart Greenville and arrive in Columbia. We also said that we were going to depart at 1800 Zulu. So let's say that it is, uh, we're sitting at the hold short line and it's actually uh, 1815 Zulu when we call the flight service station. Well that's okay, we can depart a little bit later than what we said, but they're still going to time it for one hour. So they would expect us to arrive in Columbia at 1915 Zulu. And we also had already discussed on how we could um, contact the flight service station. So sitting at the hold short line, we could actually use our cell phone since most everybody has a cell phone this day and age. You could simply, if you can hear, you can call 1-800-WX-BRIEF on your cell phone or we can try to call them over COM1 or COM2 in the airplane on the frequencies that we had written down earlier. Okay, but anyways, um, if we departed and we opened our flight plan at 1815 Zulu, then the flight service station basically sets a timer and expects us to arrive at 1915. So what happens if we don't arrive at 1915? Well, we are considered uh, lost or missing if it's 30 minutes past this. So basically they're giving us to 1945 to make contact with them. So let's say, for example, we uh, left Greenville and we're flying along. Now we wanted to go direct to Columbia but for whatever reason, we maybe had to divert around some weather, and then you came back and got on course or whatever, and you see that it's going to take you an hour and 15 minutes to make it to your destination. Well, they're not going to start looking for you quite yet. Um, they're not going to activate the search and rescue because it's not been 30 minutes past, but they may actually uh, call Columbia Approach or Greer Approach and ask, hey, have you seen November 870 Sierra Papa, they were due to arrive at 1915 in Columbia and we haven't heard from them yet. And they may say, oh yes, we see them on short final now or whatever, so then they know that you're fine. Now once you land, you want to be sure to close your VFR flight plan. So now you've landed, you taxied in, you're ready to shut the engine down, be sure to call the flight service station back, either on the frequency we wrote down, on the comm in the radio, or comm in the airplane, or again, you can call them on your cell phone. But please be sure to close your VFR flight plan so they don't have to waste their resources to try to find you and make sure that you're okay. So why exactly would we want to file a VFR flight plan? Do we have to? No, we don't have to, but sometimes it's a really, really good idea. Now we always want to get flight following. Flight following is when the approach uh, controllers watch us fly along and then they can give us advice on uh, you know diverting around weather or maybe they see terrain or a TV antenna or other traffic or something so they can kind of help us out and watch us fly along. Now keep in mind as uh, VFR traffic it's not their responsibility they only help us if they have time which usually they do a pretty good job of that. But let's say that there's an example where you want to fly from maybe Greenville uh, up to uh, Gatlinburg or somewhere like that. So um, if this is the airport up here that you want to fly to, there are many mountains between us and them. And if you went on a direct flight from Greenville up to one of these airports over here, you'd have to climb all the way up to say 9,000, or excuse me, uh, probably 10,500 to have really good clearance over the mountains. So maybe you don't want to climb that high, and plus it's not that long a journey to call for climbing that high. So what you could do is you maybe file your flight plan to fly over the Asheville Airport, and then there's a VOR up here, so maybe you want to fly over the Asheville Airport, and then to this VOR, and then this route. Well, if you had not filed a flight plan, then they the flight service station, when they activate search and rescue, if you didn't show up on the other side, 
and you didn't have a flight plan, um, so when search and rescue is activated, they're probably going to search this area because they're going to assume that you went direct. But if you had filed a VFR flight plan and opened it, remember we told them our route. Um, and the one that we filed, we just went direct. But in this situation, you would have filed Greenville to Asheville to the VOR and then to your destination. That way, if you didn't show up when you were supposed to and they had to activate search and rescue, they'd have a better idea to know where to look for you. Plus, they would know to look for a white aircraft and they would need um, know to look for three souls. All right, the other reason that you may want to um, open and close a VFR flight plan is if you're flying over a very, very sparsely populated area where ATC radar coverage doesn't um, cover that area. So uh, this actually happened to me and one of my students when we flew from the East Coast to the West Coast as we were flying um, out near the Phoenix and Albuquerque area and we ended up flying for three hours over the desert which was uh, probably 120 degrees below us um, but we were flying and there was about two or three hours with no radar coverage whatsoever. So if anything had happened um, at least they would know that they need to go look for us. If we did not file a flight plan and then activate it, then they wouldn't have known where to look for us and we would have been walking out of the desert or trying to walk out of the desert. So anyways, um, do you have to file and open and close a VFR flight plan? You do not have to, but in many situations it's a really good idea. And uh, we're going to have you open and close your flight plan at least once, if not several times, during your flight training.